those events occurring that we don't understand and haven't taken account that they could happen. Okay? So let's start with that one because that's very important. We can we can address that substantively in terms of facts and then more importantly in terms of uh, what we do about it. Now, maybe the best way to frame this is the nature of crisis. The nature of crisis, if you want, is not just a big event that's happened. We've had many big events that happen that are not crisis. A crisis is something that we feel is outside our understanding or the norm. The rules of game change, you don't know what the rules are, and that makes people very upset and nervous because they don't understand what's happening. If you want a, a, a feeling, I, I suspect that most all of you at one time or other have had the flu. Ordinary flu, not H1N1 or anything, okay? Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm gonna die when I have the flu. I feel like it's, you know, it's horrible, everything. But I know if I have the flu, in four days, six days, I'll be okay. Now, let's rewind the tape. Same symptoms as the flu. No, forget it. And your doctor says, I don't know what's wrong with you. Now that becomes very scary, because you feel like you're gonna die. And now you have no, more, no information or no knowledge or no experience or anyone telling you that you aren't. So, I don't know if this gets to you, but, it, but this is what I think is, defines a crisis. And you have to think of a context more globally. That's what people are into. Now, that, you know, so to the extent that we can come to understand what's actually happening, that helps deal with it, at least the current issue. Now, coming back to your notion of last one, you made some assumptions in your question. I know you didn't mean it, but you sort of said, given that you're an axe murderer, how do you feel about it? <laughs> and maybe someone doesn't quite agree with that. Uh, on the idea that the people involved here, both in the practicing community and the academic community and the government, collectively in this whole area, don't understand that rare events can occur and don't build them into their models and to their thinking. It's just wrong. That's incorrect. I mean, I hate to use myself, but since I know my own, 34 years ago, I published a paper that has been widely used and practiced and so forth on dealing with so-called jump event risk and everything. So, and there, you know, I can just show you objectively, people do build models with all kinds of fat tails. So this is part of what happens in a crisis. People say things, either as hypotheses, but they say them often enough and hypotheses become fact, and they say, well, of course this is true, now let's. And I would call you back and say, first establish the phenomenon before you ask what to do about it. So at that level, you know, part of what I would do if I had another two hours with you all is take you through a series of things to show you how things like credit risk and others, how you can understand it, even if you know nothing about it, but about a half hour or so of dedicated thinking at a level so you can understand some of the so-called mysteries. And that's in my way by doing, not just saying, of I would try to convince you that finance science, economic science, these tools, we don't have to throw this paradigm out. It's not as though those things weren't covered in it. It's the application to you know, the implementation, lots of mistakes. There are plenty of fools and knaves in this story. Please let me say that. And, you know, so I'm not saying this is all that, but it's very important to understand there's beyond the fools and knaves, there are structural issues that, that, that are there that are a big part of this. And it's also very important to understand, as far as my belief, and I'm somewhat involved in these things, that there's no new science here. There's no new particle that we didn't understand is a principle. Do you understand? Lots of mistakes, okay? But when you look at them, you're gonna find out that many of them actually came from the opposite end of the spectrum. For example, people were say, are saying, let's get rid of all these people with antennas coming out of their head, you know, who, or is, and put people with common sense in. Um, first of all, it's very complicated, this thing, and common sense is not, in, you know, this is like trying to fly 787 by common sense. I mean, it all depends what your common sense is, but it's not. <laughs> uh, so so unless, you're, you know, unless you're in a model, that's good. 
but but the fact of it is, I think it's the wrong. If you've got, we actually have to go in the other direction. There are many facets to this problem. One of them is that I think is has come through is senior management's boards of directors of particularly financial institutions and government regulators did not understand what was going on. I don't mean it was because it was being hidden from them. I mean they didn't understand it at a level that they could question, push back, say it. Now, this is not the whole answer by any means. What we need is the opposite of getting rid of people who understand. We have to go the other way. We have to demand that our senior managements, our overseers, those in the world who are looking after this, as well as boards, have the kind of knowledge base that allows them to oversee and, and, and push back and, and, and decisions. I do believe, and I'd be happy to, you know, get tired of it, that what we have is not fundamentally have to be changed. There's lots we're learning, but don't misunderstand me. But it's very important in going back to the crisis notion of things. We're not a drift by knows we don't know what's happening or what's going on. Okay? And I, you know, I, I'm not being apologetic for it. Uh, LT7 is another story, but that's of a different genus, genus and species, uh, and really has very little, if anything, to do with this crisis. So can I, can, I just, can I just add a right to that? Because you said something very interesting there. I think um, in terms of an event like this, was I don't know how many of our audience uh, are like me. We don't talk economics very much and don't talk to distinguished economists very often. But as I understand what you just said, you are suggesting that one of the seeds, anyway, of the recent financial crisis was that there was not sufficient understanding of the technicalities of some of the financial instruments and some of the economic models that were being used in some of the key locations within the finance sector, within the companies, within, regular, within government. So that the, the, the public understanding of economics or of the relevant branches of economics wasn't adequate to the management of the financial system. Is that what, I don't want to put words in your mouth, is that what you were suggesting? I'm suggesting that there, that's an element of it, yes. And I, I, I mean, I don't want to say that people didn't understand anything, but there's a, I don't know how to put it, it's, it's a little bit like the earlier question about intuition. You don't have to be a mathematician, you don't have to know how everything works in building to understand how it works and how it should work and what are the factors that affect things. So that when someone makes a presentation to you, such as the loan book is still fully performing, uh, we added no loans, therefore the risk hasn't changed. If you had one more piece of information, residential housing has fallen by 15%. Yes. And you say, as an ergo, because everything's performing and we haven't added anything, there's been no change, therefore we're not changing the prices or the risk measures. You gotta be able to know enough to say, I don't know what the quantitative amount is, that makes no sense. And it's that level I'm talking about. So let me be clear, it isn't that the people here don't have some knowledge. And, and I think, you know, if you're talking about solutions, remember I mentioned being an engineer, you know, the answer isn't to force the system that's serving us to not do things or simplify things to make it easier for those who are overseers. Be a little bit like if the head of FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, said, I don't understand nanotechnologies. Ergo, we're not allowed to use nanotechnologies in medicine. Yeah. There is another solution. <laughs> yes. You know? Maybe we get someone who does, but you know. And, and that's the way I in the spirit I mean. But yeah. it is an important element of the issue. Thank you. I'm going to move on. I think we'll take another question now if we may.